Hi everyone, welcome to Ranking Bass Vlog number 11, and today I will be discussing The Little Drummer Boy Book 2. So, The Little Drummer Boy Book 2 takes place where the first one left off. Aaron has just concluded playing for baby Jesus. While Malkior, one of the three wise men, invite Aaron to go with him to meet up his friend Simeon, who has been telling for years the, for the birth of the Chosen One, but everyone thinks he's crazy and ignores him. And he has made these bells to announce it. So the Roman soldiers, who are the tax collectors, take them. So it's up to Aaron, Melchior, and Simeon to go, well, steal the bells back. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, this special, for those of you who don't know, Little Drummer Boy is one of my favorite Rankin Bass specials. Top five, hands down. This was a big step down from the first one. Not that it's awful. It's not good. Oh, uh, well, let me get into detail. First of all, the story. The story is just boring. It's just, you know, the last one we had, death of parents, hate of humans, trying to learn how to love. And this one, we just have them trying to get some bells. That's it. Aaron, Melchior, and Simeon are just trying to get some damn bells. Like, that's the story. The other one was, the first one, the story was so much more compelling. And while this one does have a few, not, how I said, like, the first one had, like, the big emotional moments, like at the end when Aaron is playing for Jesus, and you hear the choir, and it's just a beautiful mix of emotions. This, you have some nice moments, but they're not anything that really tugs at your heartstrings like the first one. Again, it's just kind of bland. And now let's look at the casting. Um, Garson Greer is back as the narrator. She does a good job. Um, they, she's actually the only original cast member who returned. The, the kid who played Aaron was played by, okay, Aaron was played by a kid named David J. Because probably at this point, the kid they got... The, the one who played him in the first one, I guarantee you at this point his voice probably changed and they wanted to get somebody younger. And this guy, oh my god, he's just bland, Aaron, not just you know, vocally, he just sounds like he's just sitting at a table reading his lines into the microphone. Like there's moments when he tries to be emotional, but... It's just really not that convincing. And just his face. There is like little emotion on that face. It's just that. Okay, um, I couldn't find the cast list of who played Simeon and Malkior, but they're, again, bland and just not interesting. Like, you could tell they're nice guys. Simeon replaces Aaron Strong at the end, which is a pretty sweet moment, but... Again, it doesn't have that oomph that the last one had. Well, with the characters, the one who is entertaining is the villain Brutus, the lead tax collector, played by Zero Mostel, who was also the original Tevier in Fiddler on the Roof, and was Max Bialystok in The Producers. What's funny about him is that he could just go from 0 to 100 in just like 30 seconds. Like, like there's a scene when 
when they go to Simeon's door and his partner asks him, one of his soldiers asks him, so, um, sh should we break down the door? He goes, no, let's just tap the door lightly and talk in a gentle voice. Of course, break down the door! And yet, he's rather entertaining. And, and, um, yeah, music-wise, there's only three songs. And there's only, and only one of them is original. And that is a song called Money, 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 which is sung by Brutus and the S Soldiers. And it's a good song. It's catchy. I was humming along with it. And it's later reprised by Aaron. Um, just one quick thing about that song, like how I said Zero Mostel, and I actually watched this before I researched him. He was, that he was Tevye and Fid Fiddler on the Roof, because I'm sitting there thinking... Yeah, the song kind of reminds me of something from, like, Fiddler on the Roof. But, yeah, that, that's a good song. Um, the other two is just Do You Hear What I Hear and the Little Drummer Boy song. And they, the choir they got wasn't the first one. The first one I liked much, much better. This one, I don't know, just didn't have that same power. Like, they were good, but it's just... Ugh, just doesn't have that same power the other and that same emotion like they're singing here it's just background music it's nice background music but that's all it really is is just background music again it was kind of odd the little drummer boy was one of those to get a sequel um again didn't need to be made like I said in the previous one, Rudolph's Shiny New Year, that was a sequel that didn't need to be made. But at least it had a good story, fun characters, and pretty. And it was pretty creative. This is just dull. And you could tell that they put some effort into it, but just, again, just a lackluster story. And I think it's just something they just threw together because, you know, cash cow. Just to milk, you know, just to milk that cash cow. And, yeah, that's, it's not a memorable one. Do I think it's awful? No. But do I think it's good? No, not at all. It's, again, just bland. It's boring. Like, Again, some good things, but not enough to warrant a top spot. Like, would I say, would I recommend it? I would say if you want to watch it just to say you've seen them all, then yeah, I would say give it a watch. It's worth one viewing, but yeah, this was just something that didn't need to be made, and it's forgettable. So I'm going to be giving Little Drum Boy Book 2 a D. Again, just a giant step down from the first one. Alright guys, did you see Little Drum Boy Book 2? Tell me your thoughts down below. And if there's a Christmas special you want me to review, does not have to be Rankin Bass, also let me know. Thanks guys, like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell. Take care.